what will I be called upon to do? Become more than a man and renounce such earthly pleasures as are given to men who are only mortal. The pleasure of ignorance or offspring or an easy death. I don't understand, but I've made my choice. Let it begin, Master. The barriers are crumbling. Morgan is to be the first of the Dark Ones to cross the threshold. The purpose is to destroy me. Destroy the old man before the powers of past. Finds me even strange. Do you believe in evil, Doctor? No. Evil, per se. No, I don't believe in that. You promised me to leave me go to sleep. She's in a cold appetence of shock. I came here to try to help a patient of mine. I've become a sorcerer's apprentice. Knowledge doesn't come cheaply. I don't have to put up with this. The choice is yours. Have I taken his place? Have I become the sorcerer? Doctor Strange debuted in 1963. A neurosurgeon who becomes acquainted with the powers of the mystic arts and will soon become known as the Sorcerer Supreme. His 1960s adventures with pages full of dreamlike landscapes and bizarre psychedelic imagery was a hip read for the young counterculture movement that was growing at the time. In 1978, CBS decided to once again add to its growing superhero lineup with an attempt to adapt Doctor Strange to television. A pilot was launched with the intention of it being the beginning of an ongoing series, but it didn't take, so fans are just left with this TV movie and a bunch of what might have happened guesses. I'll say right now, I've never been a big Doctor Strange fan. The character just never really clicked with me. It might have something to do with the sorcery aspect to him. There are always such easy outs with magic and sorcery stories. Like if the girl dies, the hero will say, there must be something we can do. The master will look at him and reply with something like, well, there might be one way, but it's dangerous. Then the hero will say, yes, I'll try anything. And before you know it, the girl is alive after the hero performs some spell that takes a lot out of him, and the girl is brought back to life. And everything gets sorted out. It's just always an easy out. So going into this film, I was skeptical. Plus the fact I had heard from people it was pretty awful. I will say it wasn't as horrible as I thought it would be, but that's not really the greatest compliment ever. The film creates its own story and origins to the character. Strange's comic origin is gone and he's presented here as a decent man who discovers his destiny with the mystic arts. Once I got past the fact how Peter Hooten looks like a 70s porn star, Time for doctors and nurses to fall in love. Falling in love wasn't the question, it was making love. Oh. He's not that bad in the role. He's likable enough and does a decent job of playing Strange's confusion and resistance as he's introduced to this bizarre world. But he's a bit too leading man cookie cutterish for me. Strange is contacted by the Sorcerer Supreme, Thomas Linmer, and Wong, his servant. He's been chosen to pick up the Sorcerer Mantle and begin his journey to protect the world against the forces of evil. The clock is ticking, though, with the arrival of Morgan Le Fay, who is sent to kill Linmer before this passing of the torch happens. Clea, a hot college student, ends up being a tool used by Morgan to get at Linmer. While being a patient of Strange's, he skeptically does anything to help her. You're a very unusual man. Your father and I both recognized it when you were born. You've been gifted with a clear mind and a love for humanity, hence your choice to become a doctor. Also, some latent talents, which even you are not aware of yet. Such as what? He begins to listen to Linmer, who he eventually believes, and accepts his destiny. That's pretty much the plot. There's not much else there. It's a basic origin story that was to set up the proposed series. I did like the fact that the film tried to play all this as believable as it could, and tried to avoid entering silly territory. It would have helped if there was a bit more going on, though. The story starts to get boring after a while. The shots of Morgan staring got a little repetitive. 
Despite this skeptical character being introduced to this outrageous mystical world, there never really is a wow moment. Of course the effects aren't the greatest, but I don't think anyone who decides to check this out will be surprised by that. The dialogue gets kinda clunky at times too. Helping you with your homework might be considered a professional interest. Well, does that mean I have to pay for it? <laughs> <laughs> like, I have no idea why they're laughing. The cast is alright. John Mills does a nice Obi-Wan job as Lindemer. Wong doesn't do too much, but his character probably would have gotten more to do had this gone to series. I've gotten so used to seeing Jessica Walter in her later roles, it was a real treat to see her young, wearing these goofy outfits and looking really good. Same goes for Strange's leading lady. A good hot chick and a bad hot chick. It's the best of both worlds. The final battle seemed a little too bizarre for me and wasn't really that exciting. And Strange's costume... Uh, well, let's just say there's no mistaking the decade they made this in. Morgan's eventual defeat and her teased return goes back to the old unexplained easy out in the world of magic and sorcery stories. It was interesting to watch for the curiosity factor, but I wouldn't recommend this to anyone, unless they were a Doctor Strange fan. Maybe had the show gone to series, it would have picked up momentum and did some more interesting things with the characters. Unlike the Incredible Hulk pilot, this one wasn't as memorable, and it didn't leave much of an impression on me. And it certainly didn't make me any more of a Doctor Strange fan after I watched it. Well, are you going to let me in? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs>